Да, возле ребята. Но Трамп там да вел валу, когда американцы джун, когда я хочу на паузе на Афганистан тараулиги, я полистал дели бадлей, я хвали пари сели бадлей, да бахир дети да парат на каме сабрдуди. Иншаллах да агис сарнавеш пам да сили как тумы да махкани, американцы сарнавеш по Афганистан ки уа астир. In an interview with Vice News, Taliban fighters said without hesitation that they're winning the war against the U.S. And they have a point. Sixteen years and three administrations after the U.S. first invaded Afghanistan, the war is now the longest in American history, and the Taliban now control or contest more territory than at any point since the U.S. first pushed them back. In August, President Trump launched his strategy. We are not nation-building again. We are killing terrorists. He's ordered a sharp increase in airstrikes, and he's sending up to 4,000 more American troops to train and advise Afghan forces to try to beat back the Taliban resurgence. Hey, it's Exile. Hey, are you in the room right now? So you, see, when you just passed back into the West, you passed two guys who were carrying uh, bigger objects. So kind of want to go back to those guys and check them out. This is as close to direct combat as most US troops get in Afghanistan. Brian Hubert is an airstrike battle captain. He and about a dozen other Marine officers spend day and night scanning drone feeds from around the region on the hunt for Taliban. What are you looking for? I'm looking to know whether or not they have hostile intent towards the NSAF. If they do, which looks like these guys do, it's enough for us to start getting things in motion. To for airstrike? For airstrike for them. We were granted rare access to the Marines' war room in Helmand province, where they tracked a man they suspected of carrying a rocket-propelled grenade launcher and radio, called an ICOM, less than half a mile from Afghan troops. Yep, copy all. So one pack has a uh, ICOM, the other one has an RPG. If I was ready for preemptive game plan, nine line. With F-16 fighter jets inbound, the top Marine commander, General Roger Turner, is called in to get a read on the situation and approve the target. So he's under the trees, aren't he? Yes, sir. So you got two of those guys. Well, I see it. One of them kept moving. This guy's on the screen right now. What, what was he? He was a biz ops guy? He had the RPG on him. Okay. He already identified five guys, two weapons, ICOM, shovel. And then these guys right here you see underneath the crosshairs broke off, went to the southeast of them. And then they're basically flanking them to the east. So besides that, it's just the overwhelming image that they're, they're preparing an attack right yeah, now. Yeah. from where they are. They're 800 meters away. See back in? So, he'll give us a good opportunity in a second to see it again, but for right now, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a weapon right there. Yeah. yeah, it's on the shoulder of the RPGs. You can see the shadow. It's handy with a screwed over there. There's another guy over there. What's around there, guys? Anything? It's hard to pick up the RPG. Trail has, trail's RPG guy. Okay, set him up for immediate re-attack. He's going into the hell we should stand on that little thing. Yeah. yeah, they're using them. Yeah. He's inside. I have him zoom out one more. Alright, he's on the road. I'm good. That target is approved. Primary target's getting ready to exit. Alright guys, call out any collateral concerns, please. So the general's just approved the target. They've seen a weapon on the man's shoulder and they've surmised that he's now far enough away from the building to actually carry out the strike. Like Rex LC status. Rifle. Rifle. Missed him. It's possible he's injured. I don't know. He's, he's hurt pretty bad. Yeah. I don't think he's good enough. I think, I think adrenaline had a move, but I think his right leg's missing. While the suspected Taliban fighter appeared to be bleeding out, the other suspected fighters ran for cover inside a nearby building. How often are you carrying out that kind of a, a strike? Is that pretty rare? Is it? It's, it's not rare at all. It's, it's pretty often. And what we're every doing... Day. Yes. Yeah, every day. Under Trump, American troops are still restricted from ground combat but he did give more leeway for commanders to carry out airstrikes like these. 
In the first 10 months of the year, the number of bombs and other munitions that have been dropped on Taliban targets has already tripled since last year to more than 3,000. They're dispatched from hundreds of miles away, where up to 4,000 troops will also be arriving to train and advise Afghan forces. This group is some of the first to land. We were just told um, formally three week, four weeks ago that uh, we were going to be a part of this new strategy. Wow. And so we were told, hey, pack your bags. You guys are going. For many, including First Lieutenant Tyler Wojcinski, this is their first combat deployment. I was in third grade when the towers fell. So I've now inherited part of this, which is amazing to see because you only see about it in the news and now you're actually a part of it. You're a part of a new administration and a new way of trying to solve this complex issue. But for those who've served in Afghanistan before, there's a more sobering reality to this conflict. Colonel Matthew Reed is the deputy commander of Joint Task Force Southwest. Reed's first tour here ended in 2011, but he was redeployed in April to take back some of the same areas he helped capture years ago. Here we are in Largely Taliban control. That district center, you kind of see it just next to the canal, that square building. Right there, that's where they did that uh, beep in that they had on YouTube. Out of Hellman's 14 districts, nine of them are now controlled or contested by insurgents. How did it feel coming back and seeing areas that you fought for now in the back of the Taliban and the people? It's surreal coming back, but I do believe in the mission. Back in 2011, the number of Marines across this province was escalating towards 20,000. Today, there are just 300. I don't think I'm speaking out of turn when, you know, we kind of probably left this province too early. So what's been done in the past, you know, although obviously there was a huge sacrifice, we've got to worry about the now. And the Taliban were on the verge of taking back Helmand province. And then we're back in the same situation we were before it all started. So, you know, whatever your politics are, you know, this is where we've got to stop it. And I've lost and seen many Marines wounded here. So trust me, I get it. but. We've got to worry about the now, and we've got to worry about the future. Where does that stop, though? I mean, if we're saying as soon as the U.S. pulls back in these areas, Taliban comes straight back in and retake towns and cities that U.S. soldiers have died fighting for. I think the Afghans here in Helmand, now that they know we're here and we're committed to helping them resecure their districts and their province, that uh, they're willing to fight, and they are fighting. They're the ones fighting and dying, or not. Reed is up against the same problems that his predecessors faced getting the Afghans to step up to the plate and fight without US ground troops behind them. This ragtag group may look like something out of Mad Max, but these fighters, a mix of local police and security forces, are the ones trying to root out the Taliban on the ground. <laughs> With American choppers flying overhead, advanced teams fan out looking for IEDs, the weapon causing the heaviest casualties right now. When they're found, they dig them out by hand. The brigade is now running at only two-thirds capacity, and soldiers at this base say they're stretched too thin and are struggling to keep pressure on the Taliban. Who here has been fighting the Taliban for more than five years already? Is this the worst time or is it getting better now? The Taliban are using that strength wisely, hiding during the day and launching attacks under the cover of darkness. The 
از خالیگاه مثالش از رفتار قطار ما همیشه برو برو میکنه میره میره ما خود نمایان هستیم دشمن از اینمی استفاده میکنه سر ما انداختا میکنه مثل یک دوز است که پس دوباره فرار میکنه در کوچه میره بدا 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 زوچو بدا بدا دو خلطه بکش No one knows how long American troops will be in Afghanistan this time around. But if this operation is any indication, Afghan forces will need a lot of help and a lot of time if they're ever going to gain the upper hand. Come on, come on. 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 Come on.